Hey guys, in today's video, let me show you how I made this sweet little handheld gaming system. So the first thing I'm going to do is set my combination square to 3 eighths of an inch and strike a line all the way around. And this is just going to give me a ledge all the way around the piece so that I can later on shape the outside of the case. And there's one hole and so I'm just going to continue going along and drilling out the rest of this. My goal is to make sure that I've got as much removed as I can get before switching over to the router. It just makes things a little bit easier. Alright, so to remove the rest of the waste, I'm going to be switching over to the router and I'm going to be using a flush trim bit. And this has a bearing that is the same exact diameter as the cutter head on this bit. So how this is going to work is I have these pieces that are the same exact size or the same thickness as the actual uh, handheld piece. And what I'm going to do is I cut some quarter inch plywood that I'm going to be putting right up on the line that I drew with that combination square. And so that when this router bit dips down and cuts, it's going to be referencing the, the side of the plywood, which is nice and straight. After the first pass, everything looked great. I did go over on the sides, but that's not that big of a deal. The back will be covering that. So now I'm just going to reference this clean edge on the inside, keep dipping the router bit until I get the whole thing cut out. And what you're left with is a nice empty carcass to put your electronics in. Next we're going to mark the center point on the front of the handheld so we can start cutting out for the screen. To cut the square out in the center for the screen, I first make four holes with the 3 8 inch drill bit and then I use the jigsaw to actually remove the waste. The jigsaw left a pretty rough cut, so to clean that up I'm going back to the same router bit that I used before and the same plywood to get some nice straight edges. To inset the screen, I next go over to the router table and using a rabbiting bit, remove roughly about an eighth of an inch all the way around where the screen is so it's inset. With the screen hole cut out, let's go ahead and talk about mounting the buttons. Uh, what I've done first is I took a combination square and set it to the thickness of the wall and then traced a line all the way around where the buttons are going to go and where the D-pad is going to go. That way I know when I trace for the buttons, I know where the wall starts, so I, don't, I know that I need to stay on the left side of that line. Uh, when it came time to figuring out how to mount these buttons into wood, I had some challenges because it's not like plastic uh, where you can just mold this stuff and make a template. So I copied the existing controller's idea in that you have this, the plastic housing with the slits in it and the buttons have these little wings on them that stays inside of this groove like that. So what I did was come up with something similar where you have a 5 eighths of an inch dowel rod uh, that's glued into the surface and then I drilled all the way through that with a 3 eighths of an inch drill bit and then I used 3 eighths inch dowel rods as the buttons. I'm going to take this controller as a template and then take the bottom button and line it up with the, um, the center of this crosshair and then I'm going to trace them out and trace out the buttons. I mark and drill the center line from the outside of the case just because simply it was easier to gain access to this instead of flipping it over and marking. Over at the drill press I've got a 5 eighths of an inch Forstner bit installed and I'm only going to drill out an eighth of an inch deep on these holes. To cut the button holders I've just got a 5 eighths of an inch dowel rod in this miter box and I'm just going to use my saw to cut them because they're such small pieces. I feel that I can get a safer, more repeatable cut doing it by hand. And just put some glue in. And so now let's just go ahead and stick them into place. And we're going to leave them in here overnight to make sure that everything is nice and seated and glued. Still referencing the center lines, I'll go ahead and drill the 3 eighths of an inch hole for the buttons. And now I'm just going to repeat that same thing for the other five buttons. 
Using a Dremel tool, I go ahead and cut the notches in each of the button holders. We need to go ahead and mark and cut for the area of the eighth inch dowel rod on the ends of the buttons to hold it into place. And just find what you think is center and then use a pencil and make a mark. And what I have here is a gray Scotch-Brite pad. And I have three different grits of sandpaper, starting with 120, 180, and 220 grit. And I'm gonna lay the sandpaper on top of the Scotch-Brite pad, and I'm just gonna pillow the ends of these. So I'm now I'm gonna switch over to the 180. And then finally, 220. And what you have are some nice, pillowy looking buttons and they're real soft. And to hold the eighth inch dowel rods into place I'm just using some CA glue. So next up I moved on to the D-pad and first I needed to find the center mark uh, to trace the template on itself just using the plastic controller. I treated the D-pad just like any other button so I used the one and an eighth inch dowel rod to act as the button holder itself and that's what I'm drilling out here. So for this project I decided to make my own D-pad out of wood because the plastic one was just too thin. Uh, so just using a quarter sawn white oak piece and a template that I made in Photoshop, I actually cut a piece out just using a scroll saw. To prevent the D-pad from actually sliding all the way through the hole, I'm gluing it to a one inch disc that will then fit inside of the button holder that I drilled earlier. So I ended up using a handheld router with a quarter inch router bit to remove a majority of the waste on the actual D-pad template that I traced earlier using the plastic controller. I just took my time and made sure to stay away from the lines. So even though that removed a majority of the waste, I still need to clean up the corners. And I have these real small needle files that will be perfect for this task. And then just slowly work up to my line. And finally, I'm drilling for the speaker on the front with a one and an eighth inch drill bit on the inside and then all the way through the hole on the front with the one inch bit. So we're at the part of the project now where we can talk about the ergonomics and the style of this handheld. Uh, right now it's not a very comfortable piece to hold and it's kind of ugly, it's just blocky. So what we're gonna be doing is something like this. Uh, the first thing we, that I did was round it over the corners uh, and then I went over to the router table and eased the edges just using a quarter inch router bit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have this back piece that's a quarter inch thick and has the same exact that dimensions of the handheld itself. And before we go and shape anything, we're actually going to mount this back piece on. That way, whenever we go and round the edges and make the curves, the back panel will be an exact fit. Uh, and to give us as much room as possible since we have this quarter inch ledge around here, I'm not going to put any screws inside of this border because that's going to limit the amount that we can take off. So on the inside of the handheld, along the side edge here, I drilled a hole on this side and this side that are going to hold a couple of these 3 8 of an inch dowel rod. Uh, I drilled them approximately an eighth of an inch deep and I'm just going to glue them into place. And so when I glue them into place, I can now use these to hold the back panel on with a couple of brass screws. And so now I'm just going to let these set for at least an hour just to make sure that when I screw into these, I don't pull them back out. With the back into place, I found a round object that happened to fit the area that I needed just perfectly, so I just used this as a template for the rounded corners. And then over at the bandsaw, I just nibble away the excess, staying away from the line that I will clean up at my disc sander. I used a quarter inch router bit to then ease the edges. So finally, the left and right shoulder buttons have been moved to the back, and I just installed those the same way that I installed the other ones with the 5 8 holders and the 3 8 inch buttons themselves. I know you're probably tired of hearing the word dowel rods, and at this point in the project I was tired of using them, but I needed to use them one last time, and this time I needed to drill them out to hold the electronics themselves. I needed something to mount the electronics to, so on the, uh, each side of the uh, button holders themselves, I put some 3 8 of an inch dowel rods into place. So finally, moving on to the controllers themselves, I need to actually open these up and start cutting on the circuit boards. Uh, you want to hang on to all these little accessories and pieces in here because they will be used. Uh, the buttons themselves won't be used, of course, but hang on to everything else. So now what we're going to do is mark where we need to cut these circuit boards to then mount on the inside of the case. 
and just using a Dremel tool and a plastic cutting wheel, I go ahead and do that. And then I do the same thing for the rest of the controller. And off camera, I went ahead and soldered out all of the contact points on the circuit boards, but I'll link to that information below if you're interested in that. Next up, I needed to go ahead and mark out the area for the micro USB cable for the charging and the power switch itself. To remove a majority of the waste before using the scroll saw, uh, I went over to the drill press to make a couple of pilot holes. And then it's back over to the scroll saw to remove a majority of the waste. And to clean it up a little bit more, I just switched back over to the diamond files. With all of the holes cut and the case pretty much done on the outside, I went ahead and used some 80, 120, and 220 grit sandpaper to smooth the surface. So for the finish, I'm just gonna be using regular shellac out of the can. Uh, it's something that's gonna be easy to renew later on when this gets some wear and tear. And I'm just applying it with a cotton cloth. And I'm just gonna put probably two to three coats on it. And don't forget about your D-pad and your buttons. After about the second coat of shellac, I'll sand it with 400 grit sandpaper before applying the third coat. To protect the speaker, I'm cutting some speaker grill that is roughly an inch and an eighth in diameter to fill the hole. And then to cover that, I'm just using some speaker grill cloth. And this happens to be the same exact kind that I used in the retro arcade cabinet. And to hold it into place, I'm just using some Super 77 spray adhesive. Everything is coming together now, so let's go ahead and put the controller buttons in, followed by the rubber pads that make contact with the circuit boards. Uh, and to hold the circuit boards into place, I'm actually going to be using the little small black screws that came with the, the controller case themselves. Uh, once you screw those into the dowel rods, it does a really good job of securing them into place. And I haven't had any issues with anything breaking or popping out of the dowel rods. To hold the speaker grill into place, I'm using hot glue. And using hot glue is going to be a theme throughout the rest of this project because I'm next holding the screen into place with hot glue. Uh, and some of the electronics on the inside, I'm going to be using the hot glue gun. So it's really handy in a project like this. Let me go ahead and show you the tech that's running behind this handheld. I have a Raspberry Pi 2 connected to the back panel with some brass standoffs. And on top of that, I have a, uh, an HDMI decoder board from Adafruit and that I have the HDMI cable itself is just a ribbon, real thin HDMI cable uh, so I can fit it inside of the case. This is a really nice cable. And I have this micro USB that I've hot glued to the back panel to charge the battery. And speaking of the battery, I have a 2500 milliamp battery that should run this for a couple of hours, uh, give or take. And I have the power switch hot glued into place on the back to be able to turn this off and on. And all of that is running to a PowerBoost 1000C uh, from Adafruit. But if you're going to do this exact same handheld, I'd recommend getting the PowerBoost 1000 Basic and a separate charging board because I am running into some power issues and eventually we'll have to switch this out. On the inside, it's running off of a 5-inch TFT screen and I have a 1-inch speaker connected to a 2.5-watt amp board just to give that a little power. Uh, I have all of the, the D-pad, the buttons and everything hardwired to the GPIO ports on the Raspberry Pi. So all I have left to do now is to plug all this stuff up and hope that I can fit it on the inside of this handheld. So looking back at this project, uh, was it a practical project? Probably not. Uh, will I have problems with heat? Probably. Uh, but it was a fun project to do and I set out to make a handheld and I accomplished that task. And it wasn't easy to do. I had to think of some stuff up along the way, especially with the buttons and how I was going to hold them into place. But it was a fun project that I'm glad that I built, and I hope that you enjoyed the progress and watching as I built it. Uh, if you liked it, share with a friend and subscribe to the channel if you're not. And please hit that thumbs up button below and let me know what you think with a comment.